Explosion protection. The basis for an explosion is flammable material, oxygen or air, source of ignition. So these are the three factors which are very important for explosion. In production and workplaces, hazardous areas can develop wherever the first two preconditions for an explosion are fulfilled. Typical hazardous areas form in fa chemical factories, refineries, cleaning equipments, any paint workshops, store for milk products and other combustible dust. The first two factors, flammable substance and air, must be present in sufficient quantity to form an explosive atmosphere. Explosion protection methods can be divided as primary explosion protection and secondary explosion protection. So first of all about the primary explosion protection aims at preventing the formation of an explosive atmosphere that can be achieved by avoiding or restricting the release of any flammable material, increasing air circulation by natural or artificial ventilation to flammable concentrations to below LFL, that is lower flammability limit, inerting by adding nitrogen or carbon dioxide, and monitoring the concentrations of flammable through gas detection systems. The second type of explosion protection is secondary explosion protection. When the releases cannot be eliminated completely in many process areas and inerting in working areas is not always possible, primary protective measures alone are not sufficient. In that cases, secondary measures will be necessary for safe operation. This include avoiding any ignition sources, Limiting the surface temperatures of the equipment to below the SIT, that is the self-ignition temperatures of the flammables. Limiting energy levels through intrinsic safety levels in electrical equipments. Limiting the explosion damage through the use of flame-proof enclosures, explosion containment, explosion venting and explosion isolation. We will come into detail of explosion containment, venting and isolation in the coming slides. Explosion containment. This method of protection discuss about the ability of the equipment as well as all the interconnected pipe work, flanges, instrumentation mountings to withstand the maximum explosion pressure. The containment of explosion pressures which is developed by dust explosion requires powder handling equipment of high strength. Actually the high strength means it should be capable of withstanding pressures in the range of 7 to 10 bar gauge pressure. The containment include over pressure protection, overfill and spill protection, protection from the leakages. Over pressure protection. All the vessels are required to have over pressure protection, especially the pressure relief valve, which must be provided to all the vessels that store the material which is subjected to bleeding. The relief devices can be located directly on the vessel or installed within a process or utility pipeline connected to the vessel. Overfill protection for a pressure vessel should include instrumentation with two level measuring devices that are independent of each other and can be repaired without removing the vessel from service. The vessel must be provided with a high level alarm which is independent of other level instruments. Spill containment consists of dike to prevent the uncontrolled dispersal of flammable liquids. Pills are confined inside the dike area and they are diverted from the vessel to prevent accumulations near the vessel with the ground graded and the sloped away from it. So dike is included as a spill containment device. Explosion venting is the control of pressure by the release of deflagration through an opening of appropriate size. Deflagration consists of a rapid reaction during which the heat is transferred from 
a reaction zone to the nearby reactant whose temperature is then raised to a point at which they too react. Explosion vending systems are designed to open at the initial or the incipient stage of explosion. The type of sensors used here is pressure switches. In flameless venting, the different parts are vent panel, flanged housing, flame arrester element. Common designs of explosion vent are membrane, a membrane that breaks at the preset pressure on the explosion vent to allow the flame front to exit from the vent in high pressure situations. And another type is a hinged panel. By installing a hinged panel with spring that open at preset pressure, the flame front is allowed to exit the system. The advantages of explosion venting system is it is relatively inexpensive when compared to other explosion protection options and it is also very simple to install. The disadvantages of this explosion protection method is that it is not suitable for toxic materials and as well as this is not at all suitable for any combustion products which is released from any buildings and all. Explosion isolation. In a chemical industry, there have been a number of major incidents in which loss of containment of hazardous substance was one of the main factors. These losses occurred because vessels or process plant containing large quantity of hazardous substances could not be isolated quickly. Rapid isolation of vessels or process plant is one of the most effective means of preventing loss of containment or limiting its size. Isolation provision should be designed to ensure a safe process state and minimize the loss of containment. Isolation is used to separate incompatible materials or conditions that together would constitute a hazard. For example, a fire hazard can be eliminated if fuel or oxygen or source of ignition is eliminated. And the use of thermal insulation on hot or cold surface to prevent injury to personnel on contact with such surface. Use of explosion proof equipment in flammable atmospheres. We know that a process without interconnections is rare. And any process with interconnections is subjected to flame propagation through the duct. Measures will be needed to prevent an explosion initiated in one plant and propagating from that plant to the pipes, ducts, chute and conveyors. Measures should therefore be taken to create barriers to avoid propagation of an explosion. There are basically two types of isolation barriers available. Mechanical barriers, for example, rotary valve and quick acting valve. Chemical barriers, for example, detection of the flame front. 